I'm Chaz Andres. Welcome to This Week in Magic Online Finance. I'm still on vacation, so I'm recording this in the past for all of you to watch in the future. I'm assuming it is a goggles and robots future, which is why I'm dressed this way so that I can better fit in to the new culture and that you think of me as more of an expert. We have been upgraded. If this is not a goggles and robots future, please disregard and start the video at the next clip. Our topic this week, when is the right time to buy? And conversely, when should you avoid buying because the prices are too high? This is a great topic for those of you looking to speculate on cards, as well as those of you who just want to get a good deal when you're buying cards for your collection. First of all, don't buy anything during the pre-release period if you can help it. All right, so technically Magic Online doesn't really have pre-releases anymore, uh, but what I'm really talking about is the first week to 10 days when cards are legal online. For example, Gideon of the Trials was a 30 ticket card for the first three days it was out online. Even just a week later, it was down under 10 tickets. Some people need to buy right away because they want to play the new decks immediately. If you're money conscious, don't let that be you. Next, make sure you develop a good handle of the Magic Online schedule of events. What you're really paying attention for are the flashback draft formats. Granted, they're not happening as often in 2017 as they did in 2016, but when they do happen, the tournament staples in those sets tend to be at their lowest price of the year, three or four days after that set starts being drafted. And then they slowly creep up, 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 up again. You definitely want to buy in during that low if you can. It's one of the most risk-free buying opportunities in all of Magic Finance. It can be tempting to think of Magic Online as a completely different thing from the paper game, but large paper tournaments like the Pro Tour and Major Grand Prix can still affect the prices of cards online. If there's going to be a major event coming up, you want to make sure you buy at least a few days before the start of it, or wait until a few days after. The worst time to buy is while a card is kicking butt on a prominent stream, especially during, say, the top eight of a Pro Tour. Make sure you pay attention to all the changes happening to the treasure chests. Now, I'm not just talking about cards added or taken away from the curated list, I'm talking about the rate at which they drop. For example, Rishidon Port's drop rate was increased recently, causing the price to come down. If you had seen that change, you would have been able to sell your ports before the price ended up tanking. Treasure chest changes can also lead to some really good buying opportunities. For example, if an important card is taken off the curated list, that means the little supply faucet is being turned off. And that means that even if the price seems kind of high, it may be the best chance you're going to get to buy for a while. Now, whenever a new set is released, the older standard legal expansions tend to drop in price a little. This is because everyone is thinking about the hot new toy. No one's really focused on that dusty old set in the corner. This is a really good time to buy as especially if you're speculating on cards for the future. The only downside is if whatever cards you're interested in are rumored to be in the hot new deck, waiting around is just cost your best opportunity. So use this technique sparingly. Set redemption also has a small effect on the prices of standard legal cards. Generally what happens is prices slowly start to increase as you head toward that window and then drop a little when that window slams shut. Uh, if you're going to buy cards around the redemption window, I recommend buying in at least three weeks before the end of that window or waiting until the redemption period is over. Seasonal price shifts are also a thing on MTGO, though not as significantly as in the paper game. All the same, the last couple of weeks of August during those dog days of summer when no one really wants to be in a computer, great time to buy. Same with the last couple of weeks of December when everyone is on holiday and again, people aren't playing a lot of Magic Online. Generally, the best times to sell are going to be early fall around the time people are coming back to school and also the hype window for that fall set, as well as in the early spring. That's all I got for you this week. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the YouTube channel, and come back next time for the last of my vacation weeks when I'm going to teach you to do what I do.